Hello, and welcome to our Bible study lesson for the week of January 15, 2023. I'm your host, Minister Marshall Bell. I greet you in the exalted name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Let us pray. Dear Master, right now, take out what should not be in me. Fix it where it's just me and you being together right now where I can speak to your people boldly and tell them the words that you would have me to say. Dear Master, anything that's in me right now, remove it. I want to be one-on-one -on -one with you. Hold me up behind your cross. Help me to speak your words. Bless each home that's going to be represented here today. Bless each one, person one by one and collectively. Bless those in the pardon of the sins that don't know you as their Lord and Savior. Help me to say something that will reveal to them that they need you in their lives. These are all the blessings I ask in our loving Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. This week's lesson is entitled, The Narrow Way. Three words. Only three words. The Narrow Way. We're going to be looking at Luke 13, 22. Through 30. Let us begin with that. And it says, And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying towards Jerusalem. Then one said to him, Lord, are there few who are saved? And he said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able. When once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open for us, and he will answer and say to you, I do not know you, where you are from. When you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets, but he will say, I tell you, I do not know you. Where you are from, depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. There will be weeping and gashing of teeth. When you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and yourselves thrust out, they will come from the east and the west, from the north and the south and sit down in the kingdom of God. And indeed, there are last who will be first, and there are first who will be last. Let's look at this like we usually do, chapter uh, verse by verse. We're gonna start the first two verses, Luke 13, 22 and 23. That reads, And he went through the cities and villages teaching and journeying towards Jerusalem. Then one said to him, Lord, are there few who are saved? And he said to them, we're going to stop right there for a second. We're going to look at this. Jesus didn't make it easy for people to follow him because what he would say was so different from what they were used to hearing from the religious elite. So naturally, they asked Jesus this question in 13.23. If just being a Jew doesn't save you, and being good doesn't save you, and just believing in God doesn't save you, will there be very many saved? The rabbis often discuss this theological question. Jesus answered the questioner instead of the question instead of the question stressing the seriousness of the need for repentance he tells this purpose in, in verse 24 we're going to move it on to verse 24 it says strive to enter through the narrow gate for many i say to you will seek to enter and will not be able where is the narrow gate jesus tells them in john 10 7 through 10. Let's look at that. I'm, I'm, we're going to read John 10 7 through 10. That reads Then Jesus said to them again, 
Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever come, came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Jesus' third I am pronouncement depicts him as the door of the sheep. The imaginary contrasts Jesus' protection of the sheep in the fold with the unsurprised. The false prophets of Old Testament times and false messiahs of more recent times entering the sheepfold through Jesus is a saving action and provides, provides the sheep with abundant life and provisions. The phrase going in and out does not mean that one can virtually about being in Christ once moment and outside of him the next. The picture is one of security and safety in Christ as the door to the sheep daily coming and going. Let's look at something here. To the right place. Uh, page 1593. Oh, okay. I got it here. This says superabundance, excessive overflowing, surplus, over and above. That's what abundantly means. More than enough. Profess. Extraordinary. Above the ordinary. More than sufficient. God desires biblical abundance for you. Seed faith. As you give your total self to God, God gives his total self to you. That is the supreme message of the Bible. Inheritance in God's total self of his own person is true. Bible-based pros prosperity. The real possibility of health for your total being. Body, mind, emotions, relationships. Of your mental needs being met. Above all, his prosperity brings eternal life. Stop to think about it. What else is there worth having? Jesus said that he came to give life, not just ordinary existence, but life in fulfillment, abundance, and prosperity. On the other hand, the enemy, Satan, comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. The line is clearly drawn. On one side is God with goodness life and plenty of all that is necessary for life and on the other side is the enemy of our souls who comes to rob us of God's blessing to oppress our bodies through disease and accidents and to destroy everything that we love and hold dear your first step towards experiencing full biblical Prosperity is to believe that it is God's highest desire for you. The next step is to line up your highest desires with His. Abundant life. God prosperity. God's covenant to us is a covenant for abundant life. From the very beginning of time. Scriptures show us that God wants us to be happy and prosperous. In Genesis, we are told that God made everything and declared it to be good. Then he gave his beautiful, plentiful earth to Adam. Adam was given domination over all of it. You can find that in Genesis 1.28. God's plan 
from the beginning was for man to be enriched and to have prosperity, abundant life. Here Jesus declares his intention to recover and restore to man what was the Father's intent and to break and block the devil's intent to hinder our receiving it. Abundant life. Human worth. Christ came to earth in defense of life. By his words and actions, he opposed anything forced a person that might diminish it. Likewise, he calls us to do everything within our power to preserve and enhance the lives of those around us. In addition to in, in evangelizing, we are to work to reduce poverty, poverty, disease, hunger, injustice, and ignorance. Beyond his defense of life, however, Jesus also came to deliver from death and to introduce abundant life. By his death and resurrection, Christ has opened a new dimension of life for all mankind, that all things become new. That's 2 Corinthians 5.17. But to look, 1324, Christ states the, the gate is narrow because he is the only door. And repentance and faith are the only means of admission. Like I keep telling you all the time, Christ is standing there at the door. He's not going to open it. He'll let you in, but he's not going to open it. You have to knock. You have to come to him first and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need to change my life. I need you in my life. You have to do that. Because he's not going to force himself on you. He's not going to just say, you got to take me. No, he's not going to do that. You have a free will. He gives you free choice. <coughs> you can be with Satan or you can be with my master. But Satan is only going to send you to hell. If you get with Jesus, you're going to live forever. You're going to go on after death. You're going to open your eyes in glory. But if you don't accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you will open your eyes in hell. I am sure that's where you're going to go. No ands and buts. I'm not going to bite my tongue about it. He's going to send you to hell. He, he's going to, See, he came here the first time to show us the way. He came here the first time to show us what we needed to know. He healed the sick. Helped the blind. Helped the lame to walk. He did all those things so that you could see the right way you should do things. He preached and taught all of the good news that he brought to us and told us I am getting you back I'm taking you back from Satan he stole you in the garden of Eden from me but I'm gonna take you back and he did that it's up to you to accept him or reject him but the rejection will send you to hell Jesus motivates his disciples to live righteously by emphasizing that such living comes from the heart with love and interest, more than through observance of an eternal code of ethics. Consequently, the New Testament wisdom reveals that the difference between a correct behavior based only on the law and righteous actions that proceed from the heart of a new life reborn in Christ. <clears throat> Suspect things that are popular or favored by the world or minded majority. Moving on to Luke 13, 25 through 27. That reads, 
when once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open for us, and he will answer and say to you, I do not know you where you are from. Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence, and you talk in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know you where you are from. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. I want you to know this. Just because you go to church, don't mean you're getting into God's kingdom. Don't mean you're going to get there. There's other things you got to do to get there. You got to truly accept my master as your Lord and Savior. You can't have step. You can't go in there lukewarm. You can't act, be acting like a Christian. You have to be a Christian. You, you cannot act like you serve the Lord when you know you're not. You can't act like you believe in Jesus when you know you don't. You can't try to uh, uh, contradict the word you can't uh, ask these questions about how did that how, uh, that can't be true that, uh, that can't, you can't do that you're looking at it with man's eyes with your own eyes god is not just man i mean jesus was just not man he is holy spirit you have to get into the spirit to read this word you cannot just read it like a book you got to do some praying before you start reading. You got to get into the word the right way. Strive. Arrogant make net. That sounds weird. But this is where we get our word arrogance from. It was the word used for those who compete in athletic games. It means to put all your energy towards the prize. This is where we ought to conceive our lives. Put all our energy. Eternity depends on it. Like I say, choose. Can't straddle the fence. Eternity depends on it. Because you're going to spend somewhere either in hell or heaven. You're going to one or the other. Don't th don't, don't, do not doubt what I'm saying. It's in the word. You go in the one place or the other. Eternity depends on it. Why? Because one day we will be standing at heaven's gate and be knocking to get in. Luke 3.25 says, it goes on with this. In Luke 3.25, it says, one day at our death, or after rapture, it will be too late. Too late. Once you close your eyes, it's over. Your time is up. You, I mean, your repentance time, acknowledging Jesus as Lord, accepting Him as your Lord and Savior, it's too late. You will go to hell. I'm not. I mean, I cannot stress that enough. He, he didn't have any else to send you. My master came here the first time to help. Next time he's coming back. He's coming back as a judge and a jury. He is going to decide where you need to go. But he's not going to decide. You're going to decide where you need to go by your actions. He doesn't have a choice to send you but one place or the other. If we haven't already come in through the narrow gate, through his narrow gate, we won't get in. There's coming a time when it will be too late. Let me stress that again. Too late. This is not something that you can change after you die. At the last judgment, the door will be closed. And those who are now indifferent to Christ will claim acquaintance with him. However, superficial knowledge about Christ and his teaching will not substitute for personal rep repentance and faith in him, which brings a true relationship with him. 
You have got to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with my God. You cannot believe that he is not the Messiah. You cannot believe that he was only a prophet. You have got to believe that Jesus Christ is the Alpha and the Omega. The first and the last. The beginning and the end. He is who is and who was and who is to come. The Almighty God. You have to believe it. I cannot stress it enough. I don't want anybody to go to hell. I'm going to heaven. But I don't want nobody to go to hell. I, I, I don't want to go to heaven by myself. That's the reason I do all of these Bible studies. To convince you to believe in my God. Let me move on to Luke 13.28. Luke 13.28 says, There will be weeping and gashing of teeth. When you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and yourselves thrust out. That's going to be a bad day for you. If you're not believing in my God, it's going to be a bad day. I, I mean, it's going to hurt me to watch those people that didn't accept what God, Jesus said. It's going to hurt. Because I'm going to stand there. I'm going to be happy that I'm in the kingdom. I'm going to be so sad watching these people go to hell. It's going to hurt. I don't care how bad those people were. They still had a chance. They still had a chance to get it right. I don't care if you're in jail, if you're in prison. I don't care if you're committing murder. You still have a chance to get into the kingdom. All you got to do is accept my God. The Jews claim to be automatically in the kingdom of God by virtue of their physical relationship with Abraham. They're still trying to live under the law, giving Israel, giving to Israel through Moses, the lawgiver. But the Bible tells us in Romans 4, 14 through 16. Let's look at that. It says, for if those who are of the law are hares, faith is made void and the promise made of no effort because the law brings about wrath for where there is no law there is no transgression therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace so that the promise might be sure to all the see to all that see not only to those who are of the law but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Let me check my time. I don't want to go over. I'm, I'm all right. You see, many human attitudes, such as love, joy, patience, courage, and mercy, can be somewhat worked up by our own efforts. But faith occurs when we cease trying to do something by our own efforts and trust someone else to do it for us. Faith is the one attitude that is exactly the opposite of trusting ourselves. You got to have some faith in God. You. Uh, <laughs> You can't do a whole lot of things your own self. A lot of things you can't fix. Sometimes you need to get on your knees so you can look up and talk to Jesus about your troubles. He can work it out. You got to give him a chance though. <laughs> Apparently, this is why God decides that faith would be the attitude of Heart by which we could obtain salvation. You got to have faith. That it might be according to grace. That is, that it might be an eternally free gift of God. Not dependent on any merit of our own. I found two verses for this lesson. Luke 13, 29 through 30 reads.
they will come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and sit down in the kingdom of God. And indeed, there are last who will be first, and there are first who will be last. Do you understand this? It's going to be a lot of people in the churches that think they're doing the right thing. And they're going to be last. They're not going to heaven. And it's going to be a lot of people that you see and will think no way possible that person is going to hell. And they're going to beat you in the gate. Faith. Repentance. Don't understand it. That last breath out of that person's body. They might have made it right with God. In that last second. It gives you that down to that last second of you leaving here. To get it right with him. You have no idea who is getting it right. Or when they will. Believing Gentiles. Who were called last. Were under the kingdom. While unbelieving Jews who were called first will be excluded. I'm a Gentile. The Jews are still looking for the Messiah. A lot of them. They still waiting on him to come. They believe Jesus was a prophet and not the Son of God. Why is this so? Because it doesn't make any difference who you are or how much money you may have. If you don't believe in your heart and soul that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will open your eyes in hell and there will not be any partying going on down there. It won't be a big party. You're not going to have a good time. It's going to be hell, just like it says, hell. A lot of people that you would think would be in heaven will not be there, just like I said. And a lot of, of the people that you would think would be in hell will not be in heaven. You never know who's going. You're not the judge. None of us can judge because we are sinners. We are all sinners. Even me. I'm a sinner. I'm a preacher, but I'm a sinner. But I know how to get it right with my God. I know how to get to the glory land. But our only judge will be the sinless lamb, Jesus Christ. He's going to be the judge, jury, all of that. He's going to take care of that. The one who shed his blood for all of us. Have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? If you haven't, you need to take your good, good bath in, in some of that good blood. That red blood will wash you white as snow. In conclusion, I know that I read this scripture a lot in my lessons. But what John... 1, 1 through 5 says it's totally true and the entire world needs to know it for themselves let me read that again in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God he was in the beginning with God all things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made in him was life and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend the light. Comprehend it. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Jesus has been here all the time. He didn't just come on the scene when he was born to a, a woman named Mary. Jesus was here at the beginning. When, he's, when, they, when God said, let there be, that was Jesus. When God got down on his hands and knees and made man, Jesus. I told you before when it talks about, all through the Bible, about the angel of God. Each time, that angel speaks with power. He, he says, I. And you, and, and, and he, and, you know, he expresses himself like he's the one that's saying this, you know. That I'm telling you this, not you know. Don't look, don't look to God the Father. I'm saying this. That's Jesus. He's all through the Old Testament. Then he was born of a virgin. 
born just like you and me. We just celebrated his birthday. Laid in a manger. Swaddling clothes. Rags. You know. Laid in a, a feeding trough. Grew up into a manhood. For 33 years walked this earth. Healing the sick. Raising the dead. Helping the blind to see. Helping the lame to walk. My master is God. He's God. He is God all by himself. The Trinity. God the Father. God the Son. God the Holy Spirit. The three in one. They don't make the difference between the three. They are all one God. They are the same God. Understand that my God is God. My God is named Jesus. Now, but my master didn't come here just to do all those good things. He can't. He had one final objective. He went down to a kangaroo court. Never said a mumbling word in there. Didn't say nothing on his behalf. Cause they heard everything he said. Those 33 years he walked around. They heard it all. But they didn't listen. And they mocked him. And they wanted to put him down. Because he was taking money out of their pockets. And they was getting fat. Those religious leaders. <coughs> so he had to go. <coughs> they took him out back. They beat him. With their fists. They whipped him with whips. They kicked him. They spit on him. They pulled the beard. And all the hairs out of his beard. They put a crown of thorns on his head. Till the blood ran down on his head. Then after all of this. All that beating and whipping and kicking. They put a wooden cross on his back. That cross was heavy. But it wasn't heavy because of the weight of the cross. It was heavy enough. But he had every sin of mankind in the world before, after, and to come on his back. He carried those sins and that cross up the hill called Delgado. He laid it down. They did not make my master get on that cross. They didn't have to grab him and put him down there and hold him down. He crawled over there and got on the cross. Laid down on it. Stretched his arms out wide so they could put the nails in his hands. To put his feet down low so they could put the nails in his feet. But they messed up when they raised my master up. Said if you raise me up, I'm going to draw all men to me. He drew me. Please allow him to draw you. Listen to the things that I've been telling you. Do not go to hell. You do not have to go there. But my master didn't stay there. He died on that cross. They, they took him down. See, he didn't get down. They took him down. They put him in a bar tomb. My master didn't leave it alone. I only laid there three days. Because on great getting up, the resurrection, Easter Sunday morning, my master walked out of that grave. Raised his hands high to the sky and said, All power. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You got to accept my master. He said all power. Whatever you need is in his hands. Whatever kind of power you need. You need some healing power. It's in his hand. You need power. Just to move around. It's in his hand. You need power over your financial problems. It's in his hands. You need power to find your home. Somewhere to live is in his hands. You need a car to get around. It's in his hands. Do you not understand? My God is almighty God. He's God. He's God all by himself. The doors of my master's house are open to you. He's standing at the door. Waiting for you to knock. Allow him in. Open that door. And lie them in. If you've been listening to me and you heard these words that I've been telling you, and you're ready to accept the Master as your Lord and Savior, pray with me right now. Dear Master, I'm a sinner. I don't know how to really do this, but I need your help. I need to change my life from what it was and what you want it to be. I need to be the kind of person you want me to be, not what I am. Master, put someone in these people's lives that know you as a, their God to help them on the right road. Help them to know what to do next. Bless each home that's represented here right now, Lord. 
Bless each person that is hearing the sound of my weak voice. Bless me, Lord. Thank you for allowing me to be your spokesperson. Thank you for choosing me to, to speak up on your behalf. These are all other blessings. I ask not loving Son Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I am Minister Marshall Bell, Greater Peace Missionary Baptist Church, where my pastor is J. A. Molan. Um, I would love for you to come by and visit with us. We have four ministers there. I'm one of them. And we have five ministers all together with the pastor. That makes six. We're going to preach the word to you. We're going to tell you to you just like we God gives it to us. I'm not going to change it. I'm not going to fix it up. I'm not going to do nothing to it. It's good just like it is. So please come by and visit with us. If you don't, watch us on uh, YouTube. Uh, and please listen to my Bible studies. Uh, uh, some good stuff in there. God giving me especially this one. This one's good. So until next week, I am Minister Marshall Bell. I will be back next week. I have no idea what my master would like me to say, but I will be here ready, willing, and able to do whatever he wants me to do. Until then, bye bye. <laughs>